Question number 10, modern physics, x-ray. All right. Now, what does it say? There is an x-ray tube. And in x-ray tube, you know, electrons are emitted from the filament, which also acts as a cathode. And that electron goes and hit the anode, which is also called as the target. The distance between cathode and anode is d, that's given. And the accelerating potential is v. And that results into production of both continuous and characteristic, straightforward. And the filament current is I, okay, that is given. These are the three parameters. After that, you know, there are changes. The filament current has been made I by 2. The potential difference has been made double and the separation has been reduced to half. You can just imagine the Collis tube. Now, what are the possible things? Let's see. The cutoff wavelength will reduce to half. Okay, what's the value of cutoff wavelength? Lambda m that is equals to hc by e accelerating potential. Because the accelerating potential is double, so the cutoff wavelength has to be halved. So this is the correct one. Now let's see there's another one. The wavelength of characteristic x-ray will remain same and that's correct because characteristic x-ray has no business with accelerating potential. It depends on the energy gap of the target material. So option number A is perfectly correct. And if A is correct, B would be incorrect. Now what about option number C? The cutoff wavelength will reduce to half, that's fine. And the intensity of all the X-rays will decrease and that's perfect. Because if the filament current is halved, the number of impinging electrons will reduce. Consequently, the number of emitted photons will also reduce. So that means the intensity will decrease. That's fine. And if, you know, C is correct, D would be incorrect because it says the cutoff wavelength becomes two times. So that's not the correct one. So for this, we have A and C as the correct option. Let's go to the next. Question number 11 is from electrostatics and a little bit of mechanics is also involved. A very patterned question. Two identical non-conducting solid spheres, they have same mass, charge, and they are suspended in air from a common point by two non-conducting threads. And at equilibrium, the angle between the strings is alpha. Now, the spheres are now immersed in a dielectric liquid of so much density and dielectric constant is given. So, both the parameters of liquid has been given, the density as well as the dielectric constant. And it says that the angle between the string remains the same after immersion. So, from this, we need to calculate, you know, these four particular things, let's say. The first, it says, electric force between the spheres remains unchanged. That's perfectly fine. Yes, upon insertion in a dielectric medium, the net force decreases, but the force between the two spheres, after all, will remain same. Now, if option A is correct, option B would be incorrect, and we need to see the mass density of the sphere and tension, we need to comment on that. See, let's just take the help of a figure and that will help us to understand things in much better way. So these are the two strings from which the block has been, you know, tied. So this is the initial situation and this angle is alpha. Now let's quickly make the free body diagram, even that should not be an issue. Here is mg, here is the repulsive force and apart from that, this is the tension. Now you see this is the electrostatic force and this is mg. Now what does it say? Upon insertion in liquid, the angle remains the same. Now let's try to comment it. If I want to find the net force, you know, the resultant of Fe and Mg has to be exactly in the line opposite to the tension so that the resultant of this will be balancing in terms of both magnitude and direction. So direction should be opposite and the magnitude must be equal. Now just try to understand one thing, you will find a very beautiful point here. 
and this angle is alpha by 2. So, let me call it as theta. Okay. Now, the first thing say tan of theta is equal to F e by m g that is the first condition and in the second condition theta is same. So, I can relate it to F e by k upon m g 1 minus density of liquid by density of solid that is how it comes because the electrostatic force the net force will reduce I am talking about the net the force between the spheres that will still remain the same and here this includes both the gravity as well as up thrust. Now, when you go for this particular calculation you can easily calculate the density of the sphere and that will match with option number C. What about tension? Well, the tension has to change because see the direction of these two forces must be opposite to that of tension and how much will be the value of tension? You could see here that is equal to F e square plus m square g apparent square where g apparent is this thing g 1 minus density of liquid by density of solid. Now, it is very clear this force decreases g apparent decreases. So, quite obviously the value of tension will decrease that means it cannot be same. So, therefore, option number A and C that is going to be the correct one. All right, now let us go to the next one. Twelfth question. Now, that is from kinematics and a wonderful modification is there. It all requires presence of mind. There is a particle which starts from origin with this speed 1 meter per second and it moves in this trajectory the parabolic one y equals to x square by 2. Based on this we need to confirm about these four options and you could see options are very wonderfully given. Now, the first thing say the trajectory if I make it this is the trajectory y equals to x square by 2 and it begins from origin and the speed is there which is 1 meter per second. That means one thing is true the entire velocity will be at x direction because the tangent is along that. So, that is at t equals to 0. Now, let us see I need to comment about the first option which says that if a x is 1 it implies when the particle is at origin a y is also 1. Let us see let us verify y equals to x square by 2. Let me differentiate this with respect to time. Derivative of y is going to be v y and x square will be 2 x dx by dt and that is going to be x multiplied by v x dx by dt can be written as v x. Further, if I differentiate this, this is going to give me a y is now I got to use the product rule first function derivative of second plus second function derivative of first that will be square. So, this is how we have related a x and a y. Now, let us see what does the first option say. The first option says a x is 1 all right that is fine implies that when the particle is at origin a y would be 1 meter per second square and that is correct because x is 0 and the a y would be equals to v x and v x is 1 meter per second. So, ultimately first option comes out to be correct. Second one is a bit tricky a x is 0 implies a y is 1 meter per second square at all time and that should be correct. Because see a x is 0 all right that is fine. What is the value of acceleration along y at origin we found this was at origin 1 meter per second square. But then you also know that if it is a parabolic path the acceleration is constant and initially you know at origin you could see the entire acceleration along y direction we found as 1 meter per second square. And this value of acceleration along y at every point will be 1 meter per second square because the total acceleration is to be constant and a x is already 0 that means the total acceleration is itself the y component of the acceleration. 
So option number B is correct. Let's see what about option number C. At t0, the particle's velocity points in x direction perfectly fine. That's the tangent to the trajectory. D, Ax is 0 implies that at t equals to 1 second, angle between particles velocity and x axis is 45 degree. Now that is also correct because if you see the value of velocity along x and y, the x velocity will remain same because Ax is 0. And what about the y velocity? That's going to be Ay into t multiplied by j cap. Remember the acceleration along y has to be along this direction. You can even see through the radius curvature method and any given thing because the curve is this side. So, Ay has to be up. And how much is Ay? That's given as 1 and at 1 second. So, this is 1 j cap. So, it is a clear indication velocity makes an angle 45 degree with the x axis. So, A, B, C, D all are correct. Now, let us move to the next section, section 3.